Okay, what do we think? This is one, are we one week now since our last video? Outside, one week. Mind you, these are just Celeste fig cuttings, but one, two, three, four, 21, 22 of 28. Pretty good. That's almost 80% efficiency on cuttings that I had forgotten about. They look good. Now, the thicker the cuttings, the better. I apologize if I don't sound as good. I had a cold, so that doesn't feel great but I'm getting through it right now. And the best thing for this cold sometimes is just to be out in the fresh air. But after one week, that is a pretty good turnaround. I'm very impressed with these cuttings, guys. So sometimes it can be that easy. But quick update, wanted to show you that before we dive into why these fig trees are not growing. And I can compare them to other ones I put in the ground last year as well. Let's check it out. So despite all these other trees being large and robust, some of these trees, your daddy's remember daddy's doing figs my love and then i have my fig trees and pots which are still on the younger side except for my troiano calabrese but i have and if you look this way from my gardenia up to where you guys are with my camera i have my cold on grease my salce my italian honey and my negra de agde and unfortunately i planted these in the ground in the summer last year these two right here where i had my bench before and as you can see it hasn't done anything and i'm kind of baffled because i looked at the soil and the soil should be good underneath in fact i had this mulch and the grass grew over it nice and hardy my negra de agde i thought looked good but and despite it putting out a lot of fruit and looking good the leaves are getting smaller towards the top and so its energy is getting compromised rather than getting a robust kick of energy and so i'm curious why it's not pushing out more and more growth even after this light fruit set it really kind of put out smaller figs i don't know if it's a slower grower but i'm curious on what this is doing and why it's growing in a stunted manner and i'm very curious why this hasn't grown and so I also have my salchi over here that I took down to the ground and it has grown very slowly despite me trying to give it a rejuvenation prune. And it, things are coming in a little more discolored than I'd like them to be. So let's take a look at each. So the first of the three I'm concerned about is my salchi. This fig is amazing. In its peak form, it is my favorite fig. It's probably top five right there with my colodoms, my black maderas. And I'm a personal favorite of the dalmatis because they're big, sweet figs that look Huge and look beautiful. But this salce has a lot of dynamic flavors going on. Very beautiful heirloom variety from a, an Italian man named Mario that lived in Kentucky. I think Saxon Fig connected with him and introduced this one along with Troiana Calabrese and Achano to the fig world. But I think it's a underrated fig. It might be partial because it's from Molise and I from that area. But it has grown beautifully in pots for me but it has not grown well in the ground for me. And I don't know why, if it's just this section of my nursery, but after a few years, the figs that were coming off of it weren't looking that great. And my biggest fear is that there's some nematodes at play. But before I diagnose that, because that involves digging up the fig tree, I wanna see if I can provide it the right nutrients, the right soil amendment, and the right environment for it to thrive. A lot of these other trees that do really well along the backside of my fence used to have old trees there before I lived here. And there's a lot of deep black organic matter in that soil and there might be some sandier spots in the soil that i need to take a look at and if that's the case then it might be an amendment issue why it's growing so slow it also has to compete with the raised beds here my gardenia tree and that could be also a reason why as well but i'm not totally convinced so to be determined whether it's today's video or at another time <clears throat> depending on what i see with my italian honey and my negra de agde so moving from here, my salce, and we move right over my Italian honey. This tree was in the shade. This is where my old bench was. And this Italian honey was in the shade back there next to my Stella and Teramo. And it just grew as a stick. So I headed it and I actually harvested some suckers off of it. But I had put this in the ground of summer of last year. So me personally, I was waiting for it to explode with growth, just like the other in-ground trees here. In fact, a few videos ago, you saw when I put a fig tree in the ground here, it's already twice the size of this one, and this one's just not pushing up the growth, and I'm really concerned. So I think for today's video to diagnose these three fig trees, I'm going to use this small Italian honey fig, and I'm going to dig it up, and I'm going to take a look at it. It's not going to be a great thing. I do not recommend this for anyone who has just one fig tree, because it could stress the fig enough to kill it, but I provide this as a huge learning experience for all of us to find out why something isn't growing in a specific space that is in close proximity to other fig trees that are growing extremely well. 
So if we go from here over to here, this is my Negra de Agde. And as you can see, it doesn't actually look half bad. And I'm going to leverage you guys up a little bit. This Negra de Agde, I have its three scaffolding branches. And I bought it as a small tree last year. And I put it in the ground right here. And it just grew up this way. I headed it for its scaffolding branches. And it actually is putting on a fair amount of figs. Normally, I wouldn't think anything of it, except at all the terminal buds, it is starting to slow its growth. And for a tree in its second year, some of these cuttings are really thin. And I'm worried that it's following the trend of these other figs in this space. Now, my salchay is also putting out figs and new growth. I had to trim off some other pieces of it that had fig mosaic virus which could have been a culprit as to why it was growing slow but this isn't showing any signs of it and my italian honey is just doing poorly and so it may be a call to action to try some things out on these figs i just applied some organic mother earth growth liquid fertilizer on these to try to stimulate its growth for the spring i want them to get as large as possible before putting out too much fruit and i want them to have viable thick cuttings for me to work with for comparison, this is my Rhone de Bordeaux that I pruned all the way back to the stump that I put in the ground just a month ago. And look at its growth. It's already doubled in size, that Italian honey. So that's a big red flag for that Italian honey over here. And a big green flag, this Rhone de Bordeaux right here. It's not putting out a lot of fruit yet, and I'm okay with that because I want it to get established in the ground for at least a year or so. And it's along this line where I know there's good organic matter in the soil. Over here, also a fig tree I put in the ground this year is my Negroni. It is in its third year of life, but it's also its first year in the ground. And despite being in a shaded area underneath this water oak, it is pumping out lots of new growth, it's putting out fruit, and it's growing nicely. In fact, I'm going to have suckers here, and I can even propagate later in the year like that. That'll be a video in and of itself. But it's getting established nicely. And again, I think it's because I have a good viable sediment here that has plenty of organic matter in it. So tying back to these three trees that are struggling, I'm thinking it's something below the surface that is stressing the fig trees. You can look down this whole row. You can see even rejuvenation prunes. This paradiso went in the ground the same time as this salche. And it's not growing very fast. In fact, this Coldodom grease that I put in the ground a year ago has already surpassed it. Now I'm curious why that's happening. So anybody who's a parent knows that toys are a part of the backyard matrix. And that's okay with me. <laughs> but here are those three trees that I put in the ground this winter. And they've already surpassed in growth that Italian honey. This one right here, which is my white Madeira number one. Look how much it's grown already. This over here in the corner, this is in my Compagniere. It is covered with figs and just wants to grow straight up. So I'm just letting it do it. It has some branches over here that's growing. And we'll see how it does like that. Even my black Madeira KK over here has put out substantial growth, despite it being the slowest growing of a lot of figs in our fig world. So I want to know, why is the Italian honey growing so poorly and so slow? I think that involves fig fam for me to dig it up and we can take a look. Again, I've had the tree for years and it was in a shaded spot and just didn't want to grow. I've had this fig here since last summer and it had all winter to prep itself for the root system and it just hasn't wanted to grow. I've amended it with nice, good dirt from Wilmington Food Forest, and he has some awesome stuff, and it still hasn't really grown. It could be fig mosaic virus. It could be poor soil conditions. It could be root bound, and I didn't know it when I put it in the ground. Or it could be my worst fear, nematodes. Nematodes are common in places like Florida. Rather than film me digging it up, I'm gonna snap my fingers and pull it out. Ready? Go. It doesn't have a whole lot of roots. Up front, I don't see a lot of serious problems. The soil is here is like black, loose, loamy. If I dig really far down, it still looks good. I see some fertilizer bulbs from here from when I had used Osmocote a while ago. But I do see something that is alarming to me. And it's the only thing I've seen one other time. In this section, it looks like... That looks like root knot nematode. That little bulb there. Here's the thing. I don't see a lot of it over here. I don't see... Oh! It looks like I have it more over here as well. 
So that's a big cause for concern. These little balls that are kind of building up on the roots are caused by those microworms called, that are nematodes that are called root knot nematodes. And that's a big uh-oh for me with in the ground soil right here near other trees. Now the rest of the soil looks good. Like look at this earthworm growing in it, right? But the tree itself might just be compromised. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to collect as many of the roots as I can of this tree. Then I'm going to say that we're going to just have to stop here because it wasn't looking like that before. But I need to try to cleanse the area first. What we can do with the tree itself is I can take cuttings and I can propagate the cuttings. But the root system is also is compromised. So let's go ahead and do something. It doesn't look like a lot, but it seems like enough that I could actually continue to call, see problems with this. What I'm going to do is I'm going to collect anything that I see roots, whether I see signs of nematodes or not, I'm going to remove it. Now, how they got here, I don't know. How they, because I have so much other good stuff. Like, look at all these worms in the, in the ground, guys. Beautiful worms. Beautiful life growing all around here. And maybe it got, why it's not that bad is it was kept at bay because of the good microbiome here. And I'm hoping that it's because of the tree. I had a Violet de Bordeaux once that had it. I had it brown turkey that had it. But I am just going to pick up any remnants of it. And all this good organic stuff, like here's another worm, try to put that back in the soil. And we're going to just let this build back up, build its own safe ecosystem again. And then I'm going to figure out ways to treat nematodes. Now, it didn't, again, it didn't look bad at all. There was just a few on there, but it was enough for me to give it a diagnosis for cause of removal, you know? I'm going to have to do some research on how to get rid of that stuff for here. It's a kind of a blow to Phil's fig here for in-ground trees in this spot, but hopefully it stays acute to this area and I can treat it accordingly. I have to, before I touch any other figs, I want to go wash my hands thoroughly. The only downside of planting in the ground is you don't know what was existing there before, but the only other downside of planting stuff that you've grown is you don't know if the tree already had it from before. So however it got there, it got there. That's a pretty big blow. Oh. I already have a head cold. I don't need to be dealing with this right now. But I'm going to take cuttings from it. So to save what I can of all of these roots I've collected, because it didn't have a whole lot of roots. It just wasn't doing well. I'm going to take these cuttings, and I'm going to try to propagate what I can. And then this is all going to go in a trash bag and in the trash. But I don't want to spread these nematodes, if that's the case. All those small balls are enough to indicate nematodes. For my brain, I want to keep this place as fresh and clean as possible from any parasites like that. So we'll see. I'd like to hear your comments on what I'm going to do here at this space later. If I can inoculate it, if I can rebuild the soil here, to avoid compromise with these nematodes. I may even plant the LSU purple, which I know is nematode resistant. And that might be my best option yet and see if that is the solution. So fig fam, because I thought I saw the nematode on that fig tree that we ripped out, I went to the salche. And the salche has been here for over four years and it hasn't grown well. And because I saw signs of nematode in that fig tree, it brings me great concern about the one that's been here for a while that has grown erratically and not that well. In fact, the figs that were on it weren't ripening correctly. Something was up. So I took the liberty of digging it up because I just couldn't wait. And I'm looking here now. And at first I thought the roots were good. I thought we were fine. But then I flipped it over. And sure enough, I don't know if you guys can see in here. There were signs, not bad, but enough. Root not nematode nematode all in here on a lot of the small pieces and so i'll bring you guys close but if you look at all these roots you'll see all these bumps and you'll see the bumps here kind of all over these roots all over the center you see these little bumps but over here it's not bad right but there's enough when i flip it that i know it's fairly well infected here's a good example root not nematode <clears throat> it doesn't help that I'm have a cold right now, but I'm feeling pretty defeated. This is my salche, which I love. I love this tree, and I love the backstory on it. But if you look here, this tree, the tree I pulled out, the Italian honey, and the tree over there, we're all starting to struggle and show signs of deficiencies. But the trees behind me are all doing great. My paradiso over here, and also if you look as we go down the line and all my trees, they're doing well. So I'm concerned that it's just the section. One, two that I pulled out, and my negra to Agde. So unfortunately, what does that mean for me? 
Well, the soil is infected here. There are a few strategies you can go to mitigate nematodes that aren't really effective at removing them completely. Whether I want to cook the soil using black and clear plastic, I can put in some resistant varieties using certain rootstock. I could put in resistant varieties for the LSU purple and maybe another LSU type if that's the case. Or I forego it and I pull the trees out in this section and I try to isolate this section. The rest of my fig trees are growing quite well in ground. I can't save the root system of these trees and I can save the cuttings and I'm going to try to propagate from these cuttings but this one hits hard fig fam and I had to come back out here this evening and dig it up and just to be sure that it was what I expected it would be and I'm bummed so <laughs> Full transparency, I will be pulling these trees out and we'll see where we can go from here, there. But I'm gonna leave these trees in because they're growing beautifully. And so the trials and tribulations of starting a fig tree nursery. I'm not down for the count here, but I wanna make sure I isolate this space. I'm gonna put in some stuff that nematodes don't like, like marigolds and just make this like a little beautiful space. Maybe I'll put a third raised bed here. Lots of things I have to step back and think about but to reduce any sort of spread of nematodes, I have to forego this root ball and deal with it properly. And I have to reevaluate. You know, they do exist in places outside of Florida, including here. And it kind of affects my dream of how I want it set up here. But we're going to move on from here. We're going to figure it out. And um, as always, thanks for your support, big fam. And I wanted to keep you in the loop and uh, onward to the next goal of trying to figure this out. But I wanted to share that all with you. And um, hey, stick with me on this one. Thanks for being part of the Fig Fam. Take care. Hey, and thanks for sticking with me on this one. I'll talk to you guys soon. I'm going to go get ready for bed and call it a day. Cheers.